Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and thank you for coming. You will all be aware, I'm sure, of the truly tragic death of Marion Mustafa, uh, who passed away on the 14th of March 2018. You will all, I'm sure, also be aware of an incident that has been reported to the police. An incident that happened on the 20th of February this year on Parliament Street in Nottingham, where we know that Marion was assaulted. I wanted to start by saying that our deepest sympathies are with Mariam's family. At this time we are working very closely with them and our absolute focus is to ensure that they get the proper support that they need at this very difficult time and also that we work really hard for and with them to ensure that we get justice for Mariam and also for our family. You will be aware also, I'm sure, that the police in Nottingham launched an investigation in the days that followed the incident on the 20th of February 2018. A post-mortem has now been conducted following Mariam's death and the outcome of that post-mortem so far is that it is inconclusive. And what that means is that it will necessitate now further tests in order that a conclusion can be reached. That may take some weeks. The investigation, however, is making really good progress. We are becoming ever clearer about what happened on that Tuesday evening in February. And we now know that a group of six girls were involved uh, in the incident. Um, and we believe uh, that we've identified all six of those girls and you'll be aware that one arrest has been made. There's been uh, many reports about an incident in August last year where Mariam uh, and her sister were assaulted and it had been reported in the media recently that Mariam had broken her leg. Um, we now know that that is not the case and uh, the level of investigation at that time was appropriate but unfortunately no suspects were identified at the time. In terms of whether or not the incident in August is connected to what happened in February, we are open-minded uh, and as investigations continue, hopefully that picture will continue to become more and more clear. As I said right at the start, um, we are working really closely with Mariam's family and providing support through specialist officers. I think it's really important that I stress at this point that this investigation is very much live, proceedings are active, an arrest has been made. And what I'd like to avoid wherever we can please is that any inaccurate comments be reported uh, because all that will serve to do uh, is risk prejudice in this case. <clears throat> Back to where I started. That will not help with the objectives that we're trying to achieve here, which are not only to provide support for the family, but to ensure that we get justice for Mariam and her family. Thank you. Um, one of the uh, lines of investigation was whether this was race related or motivated as actually a hate crime. What can you tell us about that? So we have a uh, policy in Nottinghamshire which is very clear and it, it tells us that wherever an incident is perceived by any person that the incident is hate related then we will record it as such. And so we have recorded a hate incident. However, the investigation has progressed really well. There are several and very good source of evidence and so we've been able to understand what happened on Parliament Street on the 20th of February and all of the evidence indicates that this incident is not in any way hate related. Any other questions? You mentioned that uh, you conducted a review of the incident that was reported in August. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, we, were, we are aware that um, 
Marion and her sister reported um, an incident back in August last year <coughs> where both girls were assaulted. They were interviewed by a police officer at the time. An officer conducted an investigation which in the circumstances was an appropriate one and uh, there was no evidence available at that time uh, that gave us any idea of who the suspects were and so no arrests were made and the investigation was concluded and the victims were, were informed of that at the time. You're keeping an open mind as to whether there may be a connection with what happened outside Victoria Centre? Well, we are. Um, the investigation has made really good progress. As I said before, the, the picture of what happened on, in February is becoming ever clearer. Um, but one of the lines of inquiry is what happened. And that will cause us to review um, anything that's happened previously to, to Marion, and that is one of those incidents. So um, we don't know whether it's connected or not at this time, uh, but we're open minded on that subject, yes. Can you tell us a bit more about your correspondence with the Italian and the Egyptian embassies, the um, prosecutors as well? Um, I'll be having conversations with both the Egyptian and Italian embassies throughout the course of this week, is all I can really say at this time. Any further questions? Thanks for your patience and um, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, my name is Marim. I'm 18 years old and I'm Italian. I'm living in the UK since four years. I'm a student in here and I'm studying. I'm, I'm filming myself at the moment to ask you for help. I'm here in the UK. I was born with a heart condition in Rome in Italy. I felt, I felt poor recently and I've been at the hospital for one week here, Queen's Medical Hospital. Um, I stayed here and they, and they said that I, that I had a chest infection. Right after I left the hospital, three or four days after, I ended up, end up going to the emergency department. Because I've had a relapse and I was breathless. <clears throat> so they still sent me home even, even though I wasn't feeling good. Because the machine said I was feeling good. So they sent me home. But they told me to go to my, to my GP. So I did go to my GP. And that's his name. Dr. Sue. And what he gave me was a paper. To give my mom the permission to drive to drive me to the hospital in case of need, considering that the ambulance doesn't come and save me. Instead of helping me with the ambulance service, he just writes me a letter for my mom to drive me to the hospital. And, and what he did apart from that was telling me to get out of the room, that he couldn't help me more than that, and that he did all, 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 all that he could do for me, and that he told me to get out of the room, to take my mom and get out of the room. So, because I was desperate for help, I needed help. I needed help at the moment. I called the, I called the, I called the police. I asked them, please help me. The, the, the GP is not helping me. The, the hospital is not helping me. Ambulance service is not helping me. I need your help. My life is in danger. I have a heart condition. They tell me, oh, I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. There is nothing I can do about it. And the hospital here in Queens, they said, that they were gonna send me to a specialist, and they and they didn't and they didn't send me. What are they waiting for? For me to die to send me a specialist? Considering I was desperate, the police did nothing to me. The GP did nothing to me. Same as same as Queen's Medical and the emergency department and the ambulance service, which I'm complaining about all of them. The 999 service, the GPs, the G I'm. I'm complaining about the UK itself, considering it does nothing in here. I had to go to, the, to Italy because here they didn't help me. And what they and what they said was, "You were gonna die. You need the the Lasix, Lasix medication." 
because because you have a blood clot a blood clot and your blood wasn't reaching to your to your brain so without the, the last six, without getting the last six as soon as possible you were gonna die you were gonna risk your life so the hot the queen's medical hospital it sends me this it sends me everything with the fontaine at risk the last operation I've done, everyone knows the Fontaine risk. Everyone knows this is a big operation. This is something not, this is not a joke. Everyone knows that. It's written in here. Even though they knew about that, they didn't send me to a specialist yet. They didn't do anything about it. But instead they put a question mark on the echo, saying that they didn't know what, to, what, 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 what I had. Is this the UK? Do they care about the system more than the person's life? Do they care about people? Do, don't they care about people dying? Being in the middle of the street, breathless. Don't they care about all that? The only thing they care about is the system. It's how things work like. It's because of the machine I said I'm fine, so I'm fine. But I need your help. Please help me spread it out. I need your help. I'm gonna die here. I'm not feeling safe. I'm even scared to go to college. I don't go out anymore. I don't go to college. I can't finish my education when I came all the way here only for that. I can't, I can't do anything anymore. I'm, I'm locked at home. If I, if I have another relapse when I'm out, I can't. There is nothing I can do about it. I can die. They, they don't do anything here. How, how can I go out knowing that they will not be coming to me to help me when I need it? Please help me. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Please help me. <sighs>